If you've tried a bunch of strategies for ADHD, like diet, routines, even medication, and things still feel inconsistent, this might be the missing piece. There's one lab that changed how I treat every ADHD case because it changes focus, motivation, and how cleanly stimulants work. And this is ferritin. Most people think of iron as an anemia thing. You picture low hemoglobin, pale skin, or fatigue, but ferritin is different. Ferritin is your brain's iron reserve. And iron isn't optional for focus chemistry. It's required to make dopamine and norepinephrine. If ferritin is low, your brain is trying to build neurotransmitters without enough raw materials. That's when focus feels unreliable, motivation drops, and stimulants can feel edgy or hit or miss. Here's what I see over and over again in labs. Normal hemoglobin, normal serum iron, and ferritin quietly in the basement. On paper, it doesn't look anemic, but the tank that feeds your neurotransmitters is low. In kids, teens, and menstruating women, this is incredibly common. And clinically, it tracks with a lot of ADHD symptoms, like mental fatigue, distractibility, low frustration tolerance, late day unraveling, sleep issues like restless legs, and a kind of wired and tired irritability. Let's talk about why ferritin matters so much for the ADHD brain. Dopamine production starts with the amino acid L-tyrosine and relies on an enzyme that uses iron as a cofactor. No iron, sluggish enzyme. Sluggish enzyme, unreliable dopamine. Norepinephrine sits right downstream of dopamine, so you can see how this impacts alertness, working memory, and sustained attention. When we correct low ferritin, the difference is tangible. Attention steadies, mental stamina improves, and if you're on medication, doses often work more cleanly and sometimes at lower amounts. And if you're thinking, how is ferritin low when my iron level says normal? Here's how that works. Serum iron is a snapshot of iron floating in your blood at that particular moment. It bounces around with meals, time of day, and even supplements you might have taken yesterday. Ferritin reflects storage. That's why I run a full iron panel on my patients. Ferritin, serum iron, total iron binding capacity, transferrin saturation, and a CBC. I'll also check HSCRP because ferritin is an acute phase reactant. This means it can look falsely normal or even high if you're inflamed or if you're sick. If HSCRP is up and transferrin saturation is low, you could still be functionally iron deficient even with a mid-range ferritin. So what number are we aiming for? For brain health and stable focus, I don't just ask, is it above the lab's lower limit? I ask, is it optimal for neurotransmitter production? In my practice, most people feel and perform better when ferritin is truly repleted. And for many, that's in the neighborhood of 70 to 100. If you have underlying inflammation, we interpret that number in context with transferrin saturation so we don't overshoot. The point is to have enough in reserve to fuel your brain, not barely squeak past a reference range. So how do ferritin stores get low in the first place? Several common patterns show up. First, blood loss, heavy or frequent periods, postpartum depletion, frequent blood donation, or occult GI blood loss. Second, inadequate intake or absorption, low red meat diets without careful planning, vegan diets without iron strategy, low stomach acid, H. pylori, celiac or other malabsorption issues, long-standing PPI use, and chronic gut inflammation. Third are higher demands like growth spurts, athletic training, pregnancy and breastfeeding, and chronic stress. And I'll add a fourth that sneaks under the radar, chronically skipping protein or going long stretches without nutrient-dense meals. When we fix ferritin, we also fix the reason it fell in the first place. So how would you feel it day to day? Some people notice classic iron deficiency symptoms like fatigue, easy bruising, exercise intolerance, shortness of breath on stairs, cold hands and feet, hair shedding, brittle nails, frequent headaches, or palpitations. Others don't recognize any of those. They just feel mentally foggy or like their nervous system is revved but unfocused. Kids may look restless or irritable, crave ice, or have nighttime leg discomfort. None of this proves the diagnosis, but when I see those patterns plus low ferritin, I pay attention. Testing is simple. Ask your provider for ferritin with a full iron panel and a CBC. I prefer a morning fasted blood draw, not after a big steak dinner, 
and not the day after an iron pill. If there's any question of inflammation, add HSCRP. If there's a family history of iron overload, or if you've ever experienced high ferritin, mention that because we don't supplement blindly. The goal is precision, not guesswork. So let's say your ferritin comes back low. So how do we raise it safely and effectively? Food comes first. Heme iron from animal sources like grass-fed beef, Bison, lamb, and shellfish is very well absorbed. Non-heme iron from plants like lentils, beans, tofu, pumpkin seeds, and spinach adds up as well, especially when you pair it with vitamin C from citrus, peppers, or berries. Simple habits can make a big difference. Cooking in a cast iron skillet, add a squeeze of lemon to meals, space coffee or tea away from iron-rich meals because tannins block absorption, and avoid taking calcium with your iron-dense meals. For many people, diet alone won't move ferritin fast enough, and that's where targeted supplementation under your provider's guidance can help. I typically use gentle, well-absorbed forms like iron bisglycinate. Elemental iron amounts vary by product, but a common sweet spot for adults is in the 25 to 65 milligrams of elemental iron range per dose. One of the most helpful updates from the research is dosing strategy. Every other day dosing often raises ferritin better with fewer side effects than splitting doses multiple times per day because your gut's hepcidin levels drop on off days and absorption improves. Pairing iron with 250 to 500 milligrams of vitamin C can enhance uptake. Avoid taking iron within a few hours of calcium, high dose magnesium, thyroid medication, or certain antibiotics. If you're on levothyroxine, keep iron several hours away. If you're on ADHD medications, there's no direct clash, but spacing iron from caffeine helps because coffee can blunt absorption. For kids and teens, dosing is weight-based and must be guided by their clinician. The principle is the same. Choose a tolerable form, pair it with vitamin C, and build it into a food-first plan. For those who struggle with constipation or nausea on iron, going slower, switching forms, or using every other day dosing can make adherence more realistic. And if you truly cannot tolerate oral iron, or if ferritin is extremely low and you need to replete quickly, IV iron is a great option, reserved for specific situations and done with appropriate screening and monitoring. So how long will repletion take? Expect a stepwise climb. I usually recheck labs around six to eight weeks to confirm we're moving the needle. And then again at three to four months to assess ferritin and transferrin saturation. We don't just stop when you feel a little better, we replete to target, then maintain that level. And we always revisit the root cause so you don't end up on a ferritin roller coaster. Addressing menstrual blood loss, gut health, H. pylori if present, celiac if suspected, dietary patterns, and any medications interfering with absorption. Now let's connect this back to ADHD treatment so you can see where it fits. If stimulants feel spiky, you feel edgy as they wear off, or you need more coffee to get the same effect, and ferritin is low, correcting it often smooths the whole picture. I've had many patients report fewer afternoon crashes, steadier mood, and cleaner focus once ferritin is repleted. Sometimes their prescribed dose can calm down because the brain is finally getting the substrate that it needs. Equally important is repleting ferritin supports everything else you're doing, your protein forward breakfast, your morning light routine, your exercise, your sleep plan. It's much easier to execute the basics when your brain chemistry has the bricks and mortar to build with. A few safety guardrails because accuracy matters. Don't supplement iron without labs. Too much iron is inflammatory and can be dangerous, especially if you carry genes for hemochromatosis or have liver disease. If ferritin is high with low transferrin saturation and HSCRP is elevated, that does not mean you're full of iron. It might mean that you're inflamed. That's why context matters. If you ever see black stools, severe abdominal pain, chest pain, shortness of breath out of proportion to activity, or you suspect GI bleeding, get urgent care. And if your periods are heavy, please address that root cause with your provider while you replete. If you're a parent of a child with ADHD, this is one of the first labs I recommend bringing to your pediatrician or family doctor. Low ferritin can masquerade as they're just not trying, when in reality, the brain is underfueled. And kids were especially careful with dosing, but the payoff, which is calmer evenings, fewer leg discomforts at night, 
and smoother mornings can be huge for the entire family. If you're an adult navigating ADHD, fatigue and inconsistent focus, and your labs keep coming back fine, advocate for ferritin specifically, interpreted for brain health, not only for anemia. Ask for the full iron panel with ferritin, transferrin saturation, and CBC, and consider HSCRP to help with context. If your ferritin is low, make a plan to correct it methodically and then retest. I can't tell you how many times progress stuck only after we took ferritin seriously. Remember, this isn't a magic bullet. It's a high leverage foundation that often unlocks everything else you're doing. When your brain has the iron it needs, your routines stick, your workouts feel better, your mood steadies, and if you're using medication, it tends to work more predictably and at lower doses. If you found value in this video, follow me for more ADHD tips. And if you want help running the right labs and building a smart plan to replete safely, book a discovery call with me by clicking the link in the description. Keep in mind that this video is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Always talk with your doctor before starting or changing supplements or medications.